Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is awesome and good, and his mercy endureth forever. We certainly do magnify the name of the Lord, because he is greatly to be praised. I thank him and praise him and magnify him, because he's God all by himself, and without him we can do nothing. But with the Lord on our side, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. It's a beautiful day outside today, and it shows God's faithfulness. God is faithful. Uh, it's a bad uh, storm that never changes, but God, he rides in the midst of the storm. He rides in the midst of the clouds, and he makes the weather, he makes the storms to change because God has already made us a promise that that promise that he said that we will always have seed time and harvest uh, summer winter and fall and spring will always be with us so God is faithful I often quote the scriptures that say it's, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions they fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness God is faithful, and we thank God for his faithfulness and where we can build our hopes and our dreams upon the faithfulness of God. So as we get ready for our midweek Bible study uh, on this evening, uh, an empowerment session, uh, this is where we can rev up and strengthen ourselves and encourage ourselves to finish out the rest of the week because it's not over until God says it's over. Uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer, and we want to uh, remember, uh, once again, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And I'm encouraged on today that even in these times, the Lord is still saving, the Lord is still adding to his church. Uh, it's in times of persecution, it's in times of famine, wherein God can move and still show forth his great power and his mighty acts in the children of men. So let us not be deceived because God has said in his word that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, and we still believe that God is still pouring out his spirit, pouring out his anointing. And we believe that people are re still receiving salvation. Why? Because Christ is still on the throne. And he's still completing his mission. He's still anointed to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty the captive, to heal those that are wounded in their spirit and in their soul, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And he will still preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. So I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged on today. Thank you, Lord. I'm encouraged because God has enlightened us and given us a word, a word of encouragement that uh, he's always going to be with us, he's never going to forsake us, and that all of his plans will come to flourishing. Not one jot, not one tittle shall pass away until all of God's word is fulfilled. So let us continue to pray one for another, pray for our service on today that will be something to be said to encourage our hearts, to inspire us, and to give us what we need in this time of need. And also to pray for any bereaved families. Uh, there's funerals still going on. Um, pray for uh, those that are, have lost loved ones and those that are sick, those that are in the hospitals and things such as that. Pray that the Lord will grant us wisdom and knowledge and understanding and opening up our churches and not only our churches but opening up uh, various businesses and things such as that uh, that uh, it be done under the wisdom and the guidance of God the Bible tells us to acknowledge God in all of our ways so that he can direct our path so we acknowledge him but also we must take time to hear from the Lord uh, with the intent to obey so uh, let us pray that the Lord will lay it upon our hearts and our minds and our leaders hearts and our minds to hear from the Lord and to be willing to trust him and obey 
as we sing that song, there is no other way. Uh, let us also to pray for uh, uh, churches throughout this world that the Lord will continue to utilize and use and build up the kingdom of God. Uh, let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come before these great people. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for the Holy Ghost and power. We ask you, Lord, that you open up our understanding, grant wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be able to teach your word on tonight. We pray, Lord, for men and women and children everywhere that you would save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Send forth your anointing, send forth your glory and your honor. Father, we thank you, we praise you, grant ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to say praise the Lord, everyone, and everyone ought to praise ye the Lord. And I um, want to greet you from Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church uh, here in Erie, Pennsylvania, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508 where I am the lead pastor, uh, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn, and we certainly do thank God uh, for the ministry that he has given unto us, and we praise God for our lovely wife, lovely Tracy Quinn. We thank God for her, and we thank God for our leadership here at Christian Ministries. We're an affiliate of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the um, council chairman of the New York, Pennsylvania, New England States Council. And I put all that together um, just to uh, greet everyone because we know we've got uh, friends that are far and near that are watching this broadcast. And I wanna give a shout out to the body of Christ and to those that are trusting in the Lord. Uh, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all thy ways so that he can direct your path. So tonight, um, we want to delve into the word of God. And as we get into the word of God, uh, I want to uh, help you to expand your wisdom and your knowledge and understanding. And as our goal and our mission is for you to connect to this word uh, because the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is able to give you deeper understanding, give you deeper knowledge and wisdom if you open your heart to the word of the Lord. In other words, I've realized that the Lord can take a very simple message and then uh, move upon your heart to give you a deeper understanding. Why? Because the word is quick and it's powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is alive, it's powerful, it's alive, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And uh, this word that we teach and we preach uh, is meant to build you up, to give you that inheritance among them that are sanctified. So let your heart and your mind receive God's word, be open to the word of the Lord, and allow the Spirit of the Lord to move upon your heart to grant you wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the, in the sight of what must you do to serve ye the Lord. Um, so I want you to uh, go with me to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number eight. And we literally preached from this particular text on, on Sunday. And the Lord has added and has expanded uh, with us um, in this particular message. And I want to encourage you uh, to listen, to re-listen uh, to all of our broadcasts, to all of our uh, Facebook posts, and we're even uh, on YouTube under Christian Ministries. Uh, Pastor Frank Quinn, you can go under that. And um, also, and uh, listen to the messages that have been preached and that have been taught. Regurgitate them, relive them in your heart and in your mind because there's messages there that have been divinely inspired by God uh, that is able to help you, that is able to give you what you need, a rhema word in your time, in your time of trouble. So I want you to go with me as we have already said 
to the book of Exodus uh, chapter number 8. And I want to drop down uh, to verse number 20. And it reads as thus, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee. And those were killer flies, uh, bloody flies, flies that would bite you. <laughs> uh, and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thine houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground wherein, whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and the people and thy people. Tomorrow shall it this sign be. Tomorrow shall this sign be. So I read you verses out of Exodus chapter number 8, verses 20 through 23. And um, our subject uh, for tonight, uh, we want to deal with God's divine protection. We want to deal with God's divine protection. This, this Bible study would be entitled tonight, God's divine protection. And um, this is a very familiar passage of scripture and of a very familiar story, even the book of Exodus. It deals with a coming out. And the children of Israel, they were in uh, uh, Egypt uh, through uh, Joseph. They had became a, a family. They became a family uh, through uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And through Jacob, Jacob had the 12 patriarchs, and one of the sons of Jacob was Joseph. And as you know, the whole story that uh, uh, Joseph, Jacob's uh, sons sold uh, their brother into slavery unto the Egyptians, and he was down there, and what they meant for evil, God had turned it around for good. And um, Jake, uh, Joe, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, we know that uh, the Joseph, he rose second in line unto Pharaoh as he grew uh, there. And um, we know that there was also a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land where the rest of the family had to move from uh, where they were living unto uh, Egypt, and they settled in a land called Goshen. And everything was fine. Everything was good while they were living in that land of Goshen um, until uh, until the one died, the son died, till Joseph died. And when Joseph died, the Bible says the next Pharaoh didn't know Joseph, didn't know how powerful and mighty he was, didn't know how, how, how he was instrumental in saving their land. And as um, uh, when Joseph passed, the children of Israel, they were went down, the Bible says that there were 72 souls and they went down there and they multiplied and grew wherein uh, that next Pharaoh was, was skittish and he was nervous about their growth as they were there in Goshen, uh, which was a northern, northwestern part of Egypt. He was, he was nervous of their growth and their expansion. Uh, people get nervous when the body of Christ grows and, and expands. <laughs> the enemy gets nervous when the body of Christ grows and expands. 
Thank you, Lord. And so as they grew and expanded, uh, the Pharaoh said, well, we better do something with them uh, unless we better put them in bondage. We better put them in slavery. Uh, at least they uh, grow and expand and fight uh, against us with our enemies. In other words, uh, when our, another enemy would come to fight us, uh, at least these Hebrews join them and fight against us. So you know all the, the whole plan and the story as they were there uh, from Joseph to this particular Pharaoh for 400 years in captivity and under bondage. And not all of that 400 years was spent under captivity and bondage, just uh, until that uh, Joseph died and that new Pharaoh came into power who was insecure and wanted to try to enslave God's people. Um, I want to say this because our, our lesson here is dealing with divine protection. Uh, the children of Israel had prayed unto God that God would deliver them. And I want to say this, that uh, oftentimes uh, we are unaware of, of the protection that God affords us. Uh, the Bible talks about God protects us from danger seen and unseen. It's like uh, uh, babies growing up. Uh, before they even know or notice that they're in the world, their fathers and their mothers uh, and other family members, they protect them. They watch over them. It's not until people uh, uh, grow up and, and realize what danger is, that they are aware of the danger around them. Uh, this is uh, similar to what the children of Israel were experiencing. Uh, they, they didn't know for sure in their own minds as they were living those 400 years there that God's hand was still upon them, that God was protecting them from dangers seen and unseen. God's hand has, is always upon his people, protecting his people from dangers seen and unseen. And I'm sure that uh, while they were there in the land of Egypt, that they went through some hard times as, as they, the taskmasters put on them some burdens to bear because they wanted them to build their city, build a miraculous city for eat the Egyptians. And I'm sure that they were crying out to God, Lord, where are you? Where, Lord, deliver us from the hand of this enemy? Not fully realizing that God was still in control because God had already prophesied. I got to move on in this story. God had already prophesied that they would be there for 400 years and then God would send a deliverer. And they were truly... Uh, unaware of God's protection and God's divine power, even in their growth, even in their uh, uh, way of living, that God's hand was upon them, that they were even able to grow and to expand in hard and dangerous territory and situations. And that shows you the providence of God, that God is able to cause you to grow in the roughest of times and in the roughest, if you allow me to say it that way, in the most heinous of situations. God is still able to keep his hand upon thee and to cause thee to grow and to expand. He'll, he'll, he'll cause a, 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 a rock to give water uh, in a desert situation. God, when he delivered them out of the land of Egypt, he was a pillar of fire by day and a cloud by night. He didn't allow their clothes to, and their shoes to even uh, uh, rot out or to, or to and in my opinion, he allowed those shoes to grow and to expand as they grew and expanded and, and got older. Uh, those clothing, uh, didn't, God didn't allow uh, uh, them to, to go without. He fed them manna from on high. He was their protector. He was their guardian, uh, if you allow me to say that in that way. His, their guardian angel. 
because God was with them. His providence was with them. He told them that he would never leave them nor forsake them. So the reason why I say this is because in this situation, we're in, in chapter number eight, God had allowed a famine, uh, had allowed a famine to come to allow the children of Israel to be settled in Egypt. But when it came time for them to be delivered, God wanted to show forth his mighty acts and his mighty power using those whom he is in covenant relationship with. So God told Pharaoh, told Moses, he raised up a deliverer and said, I want you to go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they may serve me. And though they were in bondage, their freedom was meant for them to serve the Lord. Uh, a lot of times we may find ourselves in bondage, but when God sets us free from our bondage, from the hand of the enemy, God wants us to serve him in the beauty of holiness and the beauty of righteousness. So in our lesson here on today, we see here then, um, notice verse 22, verse 22. He says, and I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Goshen, though that word there means a dwelling place. It means drawing nigh. It means drawing nigh. So God is actually drawing nigh to his people so that he may deliver them. God will uh, draw nigh to you uh, with all of his power, with all of his might, with all of his majesty in the time where in which he wants to deliver his people from under the hand. Wisdom and God and his awesome uh, wonder and marvelous acts. He's there to protect us. Uh, and he will draw nigh to us when we draw nigh to him. And when we draw nigh to him, he will show forth his mighty power and his mighty acts upon our lives so that all may know that he is God. Now notice the scriptures. It says, and I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, and in which my people will dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, uh, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and uh, between my people and thy people tomorrow, and this uh, shall be the sign. So in other words, God is saying, I'm going to get right into my Bible study now. God is saying that I will put a division between my people and thy people. Uh, when an individual chooses to walk with the Lord, they're under God's divine protection. When an individual makes up in their mind that I'm going to walk with the Lord, that I'm going to leave behind the enemy, I'm going to leave behind the world, I'm going to leave behind the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, and I'm going to pick up and walk in the newness of life. I'm going to be born again, recreated of the water and of the spirit. I'm going to seek after uh, the, the things that be of God. I'm going to live after the way that God would have me to live. You then become under the protection of God. You remember the story of Ruth and Naomi. I got to move on because I, I want to uh, hit a few uh, points as we uh, uh, get into this lesson. But you remember the story of Ruth and Naomi and how Naomi had married a daughter of Ruth, and uh, the, her husband died. And there was another uh, a lady that married another son, and uh, her husband died as well. But she did not decide to go uh, with Ruth. She decided that she was going to go uh, back to her own country, back to her own family, and live out her days. But Naomi uh, decided that she was going to go 
with Ruth, her mother-in-law. She decided that she was going to go with her to live with her under her roof, under her protection. And she told her, she said, your God is going to be my God. And my God, is, uh, uh, your God is going to be my God. And I'm going to serve your God. I'm going to live after the ordinances of your God. Beautiful, beautiful story. If you have time, take your time to read it. And you'll see there that she denounced, she denounced all of her pagan gods to serve the true and living God. And she entered into God's divine covenant. She entered into God's divine favor. And because she had made that difference or because she had made that choice, she entered into the lineage uh, of Jesus Christ. She entered into the lineage of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, and she was able to, to settle with the people of God and she landed under the protection of God. God made sure that she was fed. God made sure that she was taken care of. God made sure that her life lacked nothing. Even in the face of danger, God was there to protect her. Even in the face of danger, God is there to protect those that, that are in covenant relationship with him. It makes a difference when you choose which side you're going to be on. And the Bible says, uh, talks about uh, Joshua and had to make a distinction. He said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. So, so, so you've got to make a choice. You've got to make a difference. And when you choose to serve God, God will be with you. Now, God will be with you so that he can show his mighty hand in your life. God does not, if you allow me to say this, I want you to hear me. I'm talking to my mature people here. God is not really concerned about promoting you. God is concerned about promoting himself in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is concerned about promoting himself in you. Notice what Jesus taught. He said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your father, which is in heaven. That's why we can say the battle doesn't belong to us, but the battle belongs to the Lord. When you realize that, that God is working in you and through you so that he can be glorified and magnified, it, it takes a load off of your mind concerning the battle. The battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. And when we humble ourselves and submit ourselves unto the Lord, we can allow God, hallelujah, to be almighty in our lives. We can allow God to work in us both the will and to do of what? Whose good pleasure? His good pleasure. God wants to show himself strong in you uh, so that he can be promoted. Hallelujah. So he can be lifted up. So that he can be glorified. So that all people will know that there is a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Hallelujah. When we recognize these things, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That, that we've been bought with a price. It is, it is uh, God paid the price through Jesus Christ to redeem us with the precious blood of Jesus, uh, to set us free from the bondage so that we might serve him in the beauty of holiness. We've got to understand this, brothers and sisters, that, 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 that I'm not my own to do what I want to do, but when I get on the Lord's side, he's my Lord. He's the one in whom I trust. Thank you, Lord. I don't, I'm not his Lord. I don't send the Lord on errands <laughs> when I'm praying. Uh, I don't send the Lord on errands. Thank you, Jesus. I don't, I don't, I don't pray, Lord, let my will be done uh, in this instance, in this moment. Let's compromise. Lord, let my will be done. 
and we'll put your will on the, on the back burner. No, uh, people who trust in God always want the will of God to be done. Why? Because you're his servant. Hallelujah. Because you are, you are born to magnify him. Thank you, Lord, upon this earth. And, and because of that, because of that, you are fall under God's divine protection. In other words, uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because God is in control of all the weapons. Because God has all, he, he, he doesn't, he already knows all the answers. God is not trying to figure any of this stuff out. Hallelujah. Be, he already knows the answers to everything. There's nothing that God doesn't know, see, or understand. Why? Because he's God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. And there's nobody else beside him. And he wants us to do great things, hallelujah, in this earth under his divine protection so that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that would rise up against us, God has given us power to condemn it. Thank you, Lord. God is an awesome God. And when we recognize and understand that because I'm in covenant relationship with him, I'm under his protection and I do his bidding. Thank you, Lord. So there's another scripture that I want you to look at here to, to, to help to illustrate uh, the point in which I'm trying to bring out. Uh, go with me over to the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter uh, number 16. And I want, you to, I want you to add this to your arsenal of your weaponry of warfare. Uh, in other words, add this to your armor. Hallelujah. When it says put on the whole armor of God, and that's the word of God. Add this to your armor of protection. Notice what he says. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 9. Notice, he says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Notice that scripture. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro uh, throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Uh, that scripture gives us a, a, a metaphor of, of God uh, having eyes. We know that God doesn't have eyes. God is, God is a spirit. But to help us to understand uh, what God does, uh, the, the writer uh, puts it in a way so that we can conceptually uh, uh, understand uh, God's ability and what he does. Notice what it says. It says, for the eyes of the Lord, God sees, he's looking, huh? he's looking uh, to and fro throughout the whole earth. God's eye is upon the whole earth. He sees all. He knows all. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. God is everywhere at, at all times. He's, 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 he's in time, but not bound by time. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's eternal. So we see here is his eyes upon the whole earth. Now notice what he wants. Why is his eye upon the earth, the whole earth? Because he wants to show himself strong uh, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. In other words, God's protection is upon those that have a great desire uh, to do his will, to do his bidding. Those that uh, declare that they're on the Lord's side, that they're going to live holy, that they're going to live righteous, God's hand is upon them. God's eyes is upon them. And he's, he's there when, 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 when the enemy is trying to tempt you, when the enemy is trying to bully you, and you say, it's enough is enough, and you stand strong, God's hand is upon you to give you the strength you need in order to stand strong. Why? Because you're declaring that you're on the Lord's side. 
Why? Because you're declaring that what God has said, hallelujah, I'm going to perform it even until the day of Jesus Christ. And those that have their mind perfect, their heart mature toward God, meaning this, that that I'm not I'm I'm gonna keep my mind stayed on him. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. I'm determined to live holy. Uh, through the storm, through the rain, through the sickness, through pain, no matter what happens, the devil can try to attack me, but God is going to show himself strong. God is going to show himself mighty. Why? Because I'm standing strong for him. Why? Because I'm declaring his power. I'm declaring his kingdom. Now notice what it says. I'm about done with this particular scripture, but notice what he says. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is toward him. God wants to show himself strong in your life. Hallelujah. Because, because, because you are doing what God would have you to do. He wants to show himself strong in you. God, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That word strong means to be empowered. Be empowered by God. Hallelujah. We need to be empowered by God. And that empowerment that God gives us, it's through his authority. God has authority upon this earth that he translates to us to walk into his authority. And when we take the authority of God that he has given to us and use that authority upon this earth, God manifests it in power. In other words, God will make things happen. The scripture says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When you walk in the empowerment authority that God has given you, God will not let one jot or one tittle of his word fall by the wayside and allow everything to be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, in your life. In other words, when you, when you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, when you don't take down, when you live this life to its fullest, thank you, Lord, not in fear of the devil, not in fear of the enemy, but trusting in God, God will be with thee to make sure, thank you, Lord, that you are successful. You'll be like the scripture that says, Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But if your delight, your happiness, and your joy be in the law of the Lord, he said in his law, if you meditate day and night, you shall be like a tree. Hallelujah, that's planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf also shall not wither, but notice, it shall prosper. Whatever you do, it shall prosper. Whatever you do, it shall prosper. If you trust in God and God, he wants to show himself strong in your life, God wants to show himself mighty in your life. If you trust in him, his eyes is looking for somebody. He's eager. He's looking to and fro for somebody that's proclaiming his name. He's looking to and fro for somebody that's going to stand on righteousness, stand on holiness. He's looking to and fro for somebody that's looking to do good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he'll give you strength. That's where the scripture comes in play when uh, Paul had prayed to Christ. He said, Lord, uh, remove this cup. Thank you, Lord. Lord, this is, this is too hard for me to bear. And the Bible says he prayed three times. But Jesus said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee. In thy weakness, my strength is made perfect. And Paul caught that revelation. He said, therefore, will I most gladly glory in my infirmity. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In other words, he's saying, when I'm weak, 
the Lord's strength is being made manifest in my life. Hallelujah. And that's what we want, brothers and sisters. We want to understand that God's protection is upon us. God support those who, are, who completely trust him. God upholds those who completely trust him. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Hallelujah. You don't want to be double-minded. You want to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not to your own understanding and acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways so that he can direct your path. And if God orders your steps, you're going to be successful. If God have built it, except the Lord build it the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Hallelujah. You ought to give God a praise. You ought to give God a praise that his eyes is upon you. That, that, that he sees where you are. He sees what you're going through. He knows what you're, eh, ah, glory. He knows the plan that he has for you. Thank you, Lord. And that's not a plan of evil, but that's a good plan to, so he can bring you to some great success. Hallelujah. God is, if God be for us, who then can be against us? The Lord is consistently and continually, he's watching over us. And he is completely, has us on his mind to protect us from dangers seen and unseen. So, so the next verse I'm going to take you to um, uh, is, is the fact that uh, God's righteous judgment. And what I mean by God's righteous judgment is in the sense that uh, God has made uh, 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 promises to his people. God has made, the Bible says, great and precious promises to us that, that, that gives his protection, his divine protection to those that are in covenant relationship with him. And, and the reason why we're going over these particular scriptures is because the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And the more we focus and, and, and remain faithful to God and his word, the greater the revelation the greater the power, the greater the anointing, which all comes from God. Uh, if you have it in your mind, Lord, I'm going to do what you told me to do. I, I don't see the means. I don't know how, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you to, so that you can show yourself strong and mighty. You are a good candidate for the blessings of the Lord. Eh, hallelujah. And the blessings of the Lord, they make it rich and, and bring it no sorrow. My God. Hallelujah. So we see here uh, 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 God's righteous judgments. And, and, and through Jesus Christ, God has literally promised us the ultimate triumph through him. Through Jesus Christ, we have the ultimate triumph. The Bible says that thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's ultimate victory in Jesus. My God, you are not a loser. You are more than conqueror if you are walking with the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and this victory is, is both spiritual and natural. And I want to say this, that that which is fleshly, hallelujah, that is operating in the flesh is, 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 is fleshly. That which is operating in the spirit is spiritual. If you're operating in the flesh, you're going to do things that are connected to the flesh. But if you're operating in the spirit, you're going to do things that are, are connected to the spirit. And we've got to do things that are connected to the spirit because we know that the flesh is enmity against God. We know that the flesh brings about sin and destruction, but the spirit brings about life. Hallelujah. The spirit brings about the, the manifestation of God in our lives. 
The Spirit brings about the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and what he has done, it conjures up. I've, I've allowed me to say that word. It, it manifests. Hallelujah. That which Jesus has given unto us through the Spirit. Hallelujah. My God, I feel like teaching up in here. So, 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 so what he has done for us when we realize that, Lord, uh, 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 I'm going to be your champion. Like David was God's champion over Goliath. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to be your champion. When you make up in your mind and say that, Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stand up. Hallelujah. I want you to use me, Lord, so I can be your champion. And then uh, one that is the champion of, of God does not boast in their own ability, but they boast in the ability and the power of God. And so that everybody will know, hallelujah, it's not of my own power, it's not of my own might, but it's of the God that dwelleth in me. It's God that, that strengthened in me. For in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. I see why David said, oh magnify <laughs> the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I know I may be talking some strong talk to some people, but you just put your trust and confidence in God and, and have it in your mind that I'm going to be God's champion. I'm going to allow God to operate in me, hallelujah, to do great things. I want God to be mighty. I want God to show his strength. I want God to show his power. Because the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You don't, you don't want to walk around like a coward. You don't want to walk around like, 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 like a chump or a punk, if you allow me to say it, with God on your side. You want to humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God and let God be almighty. Thank you, Lord. And those that, 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 that put God's name on the line, like Elisha, when he came across all of those prophets and those prophets were standing up, thank you, Lord. He said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And that's what we got to do, brothers and sisters. We got to declare whose side we own. We've got to declare that I'm on the Lord's side and I'm not going to take down. I'm on the Lord's side and, I, and I'm going to lift his name up. I'm going to magnify him in the midst of whatever you're going through. You've got to have it in your mind that you're going to magnify the name of the Lord and take on that champion kind of mindset. Huh? Take on that more than a conqueror type of mindset. Hallelujah. Paul said it this way, that I'm forgetting those things that are behind and I'm reaching for those things that are before and I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, I don't say that I've already attained it, huh? but this one thing I do. Hallelujah. You have, don't have to have it in your mind that, that you've already attained that level. In God, we're in, hallelujah, oh my God in heaven, wherein you have achieved great success, but you've got to press. You've got to press. You've got to press. And as you're pressing, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching for that high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. My God, my God. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I'm stirring my own self up. Yeah, hallelujah. So we see here then. The next verse that I want to take you to, and we're almost done with our Bible study. The next verse I want to take you to is, 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 is because it manifests victory in Jesus. Say to yourself, I got victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 44 and Verse number five. And this is a beautiful psalm, uh, especially if you get an opportunity to read it. And it talks about um, uh, giving ear to the Lord 
and how the Lord fights the battles of those that trust in him. And notice verse, uh, I want you to drop with me down to verse number five. It says, through thee will we push down our enemies. Notice, not through me, not through you, through thee, O oh Lord, uh, through your strength, through your power. Amen. We're pushed down our enemies through thy name. We will tread them under that rise up against us through your name. Amen. <laughs> through your power, through your anointing. Why? God wants to work through you, through his spirit, so that he can get all the glory. Now, I want to say this, that in this walk, what we allow, God allows. If, if this scripture deals with uh, battling over evil influences of men and women, uh, the scripture says, I know what it says. It says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that is true to the uttermost. But there's also evil people in this world. Uh, why? Because they're controlled by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And, 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 and the enemy, the devil, he uses what's in people, the evil part of people, to get him, them, to do his bidding. The devil, I'm going to say that again, uses the evil, lustful desires that are in people to do his bidding. So why are you saying that, Brother Pastor? I'm saying that because people are evil too unless they uh, uh, get saved. <laughs> Unless they get delivered by God, by God. Hallelujah. So when people are trying to impose their evil will upon you, God will allow what you allow. If you allow people to kick you around, to talk about you, to rip you off, God will allow it. God will allow it. But if you take a stand, people will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. Uh, that's why the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. If you are strong in the Lord, God gives you confidence. God gives you the warrior mentality, the victor mentality, not the victim mentality, God gives you a victor mentality. That's why he says you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Don't allow people, evil people, to uh, overcome you. You take a stand. Uh, don't walk around fearful. You can have bosses that, that are tyrants, that, that walk around in rages and trying to control and manipulate people. You can say, ho, oh, wait a minute. Thank you, Lord. I'm a child of the king. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and take a stand. Thank you, Jesus. And, and be positive. Be affirmative. Not, not fearing. The Bible tells us don't fear man. Uh, the Bible tells us fear him that is able to cast the body and soul into hell. Don't fear him that is only able to kill the body. But fear him that is able to kill, kill the body and soul and cast it into hell. Thank you, Lord. So when, when man wants to come up against you, I'm not telling you to argue and fight with people. But I'm just telling you, let your no be no or your yea be yea. Just take a stand for righteousness and holiness and God, whose eyes are going to and fro, he's looking to show himself strong in you. He will cause your enemy to be cast down. That's what that scripture means. Notice what it says. Uh, Through thee will we push down our enemies. Hallelujah. You can push your enemy down. Hallelujah. By being strong in the Lord. Oh, hey, hey. 
Hallelujah. Notice what it says. Through thy name, you pray in the name of Jesus in your mind. You running around your bus uh, on a tirade, on an uh, on a anger mission. You praying in your mind, in the name of Jesus, I bind that evil spirit. In the name of Jesus, send them a comforting heart. In the name of Jesus, we cast down this stronghold. Huh? And when you pray like that, and you praying that the will of God be accomplished, God will manifest. God will show up. God will show himself strong and mighty on your behalf so that you can do great things in his name. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Now notice then, notice then, uh, Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10 and verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents, and upon scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now that scripture there relates directly to evil spirits. That, that Luke 44 and 5, that relates directly to people that are trying to overtake you while you're trying to do the will of God. Now this scripture here in Luke chapter number 10, it relates to uh, 10 and 19. It relates to evil spirits that are trying to overtake you. God has given us protection over evil spirits. God has given us protection over evil men. Now notice what it says. Behold, take notice. I've given unto you power. And there's a difference between strength and power. Strength represents em empowerment. In other words, the authority. Power represents the, the dudamus or the power to act. Hallelujah. Let me say it this way. A, a police officer, he has authority and power. And, and uh, he can tell an individual to stop, thank you Lord, uh, through his authority, uh, but they can keep on running. Uh, but if he whips out his gun, which represents power, he can shoot him. The heck you Lord, and that'll, that's a, that's a, that's a, 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 an action there to get the job done. What God is saying here in this verse, that, that you have authority and power, hallelujah, to shut the mouth of the gainsayer. To act, to put it into action. That, it, that, it, that if you use your authority, the power will back you to cause the enemy to fall down under your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that you can lay hands on the sick and that they will recover. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that you have power to tread upon serpents and tread upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. You have the ability, thank you, Lord, to conquer the enemy as he's trying to enter into your life. And that power and authority comes from your victory that is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, my God. I want you to get that in your spirit, beloved. Hallelujah, because you've got to understand that God wants you to do great things. God wants you to uphold his kingdom. God wants you to do and manifest his will upon this earth. And in order to do that, you got to know that God is with you. You got to know that the hand of the Lord is upon you. So thank you, Lord. So the next verse I want to go through is, is that, that we have protection over afflictions. We, God, God knows that sometimes in this battle we're going to be afflicted. God knows that sometimes in this battle, we're going to have some hurts and some pains. Thank you, Lord. That's just part of a, being a warrior. That's part of living. Thank you, Lord. But you've got to know that you've got an insurance policy. You've got to know that, that you not only got a, got, a, got a doctor, but you've got a healer. Hallelujah, glory. And, that, and that's in Jesus, that he's your healer. Uh, he's been wounded 
for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. And the Bible says that, 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 that he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. And, and you've got to know that that is wrapped up, tied up in Jesus for your victory. Because sometimes you're going to have some grief. Sometimes you're going to have some sorrow. But you've got to know what Paul said in, in Romans chapter number 8 and especially verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through what? Through him. Through Jesus Christ that loved us. Hallelujah. That's divine protection. Hallelujah. When you're suffering affliction, when you're going through hardness, hallelujah, that you don't let nothing separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's where the victory is. The victory is in Jesus. So, nay, you got to say nay in all these things, no matter what I'm experiencing, no matter what I'm going through, hallelujah, it doesn't matter in anything that, that comes my way, in grief, in sorrow, in, 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 in heartache, in pain. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Yeah, it may stop me for a moment. I may say, ouch. I may fall down on my face and begin to cry. But way in the midnight hour, the grace of God will appear unto all men. Hallelujah. The power of God will overshadow a, a servant of the Lord wherein he will give you complete victory, wherein you'll be able to get up, to dust yourself off, to move forward. Why? Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Why? Hallelujah. Because God is on our side. He looking. He looking to show himself strong. He see you on the altar. He heard your cry. He see what you going through. And he's looking to show himself strong. He's looking to show himself mighty. So he'll pick you up. Hey, hallelujah. He'll turn you around. He'll put your feet on that solid ground so that you can be a testimony. Hallelujah. That God is my rock. That God is my avenger. That God is my shield and my buckler. Hey, hallelujah. My God, my God. God is an awesome God. And he's looking for that. And that, that, that privilege is afforded to them that are in covenant relationship with him. That, that privilege is afforded to them that are on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. We got to choose whose side we're going to be on. Huh? Uh, 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 uh. Elisha said, what holds you between two opinions? Huh? If God be God, let uh, you serve him. But if Baal be God, you serve him. Hallelujah. But, but what's holding you between your two opinions? Hallelujah. You got to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord, he's on our side. Hey, one more verse of scripture, and then I'm going to let you go. Hey, glory, hallelujah. This anointing in this house is filling the place. I feel healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. I feel strength and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Beloved, be strong in the Lord. Beloved, hold on to God's unchanging hand. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what state you're in. But I know this. He that is able to do great and mighty works is concerned about you. He that has stilled the waters that created the heaven and the earth and the moon and the stars and everything there is, he's the one that's able to help you in your time of need. Call on the Lord and he'll bless you in that right early. Hallelujah. You ought to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more verse of scripture I want to go through, beloved, and uh, to manifest to you in your mind God's protection. We've already went over a scripture that says that God protects you over evil influences. That, that his eye is upon the earth. He's going to and fro looking to show himself strong. 
Amen. And God specializes in showing himself strong in those that are weak. Those that, that, that have gone far as they can go. Hallelujah. It's like, it's like that, that old adage that we talk about that story about uh, the footprints in the sand. Thank you, Lord. Where they started out with two footprints and then it turned out to be one footprint. And y'all know the story. It goes on to say that Jesus was carrying the individual. Hallelujah. My Lord, that's why there was one footprint. Thank you, Lord. The Lord carries us. Hey, and he carries us so that we can testify of his greatness. So that we can testify of his glory, of his honor and his power. Hallelujah, my God. I thank God that he's on our side. Now, and we've also talked to you about uh, how we're protected over the evil influences of men. And that's Psalms 44 and 5. I want you to add these scriptures to your arsenal, to your memory banks. Hallelujah, to your weapons of warfare. Add that to your girt, that to your belt of truth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he gives us protection over evil spirits. God protects us over evil spirits. And then God protects us over uh, afflictions of, of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Afflictions may come. Persecutions may come. Uh, uh, things will try to separate us from the love of God. But in, we have victory through Jesus. That's that protection that he gives us through all things that would come up and try to attack us. And this one last verse of scripture I want to give you on today. Coming out of the book of Daniel. I love the book of Daniel. Uh, because Daniel had, had made up in his mind as a young man. That he won't uh, eat of the king's dainties. That he purposed it in his heart. That he was going to serve the Lord. Amen. So Daniel chapter number 11. And drop down with me just to verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. It says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now y'all need to uh, underline that scripture uh, in your Bible. That's powerful. And what that's talking about, it's talking about armies and forces uh, may try to rise up against you. And, and with flattery. And, and try to turn, they're going to turn people, some people, to do godliness, God, godlessness things, or wicked or evil things. But those who are willing not to discard the covenant of God, these are the ones that are going to do great things and resist the enemy and do great exploits in the name of the Lord. Let us look at that scripture again. Notice what it says. 11. I mean, verse 11, I mean, chapter 11, verse 32. And as such as do wickedly against uh, the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. Those that don't keep God's covenant, the enemy is going to corrupt. Don't keep God's word. The enemy, the devil, is going to corrupt. Amen? Make them do evil and ungodly things. But notice the latter part of that verse. He says, but the people that do know their God. Now that's key. You got to know your God. Amen? Not, not just knowing about him, but knowing him, being in a relationship with him. Amen? When I married my wife, we knew each other, but we didn't know each other like we know each other now 
30 years into our marriage. And it's how often uh, we've been together so long, how often do uh, our thoughts connect? She can say something that I've already been thinking about. I can say something that she's already been thinking about, vice versa. And, and, and we know each other. We know each other's likes. We know each other's dislikes. We know what pushes the buttons, and we know that what, what motivates and encourages us. We know these things. Why? Because we're in a relationship. We have become one. And my brothers and sisters, we've got to realize that when we are in Christ Jesus, we are one with him, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Amen? He said, abide in me, and my word abide in you. Ask what you will, and it shall be. He said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. Amen? So, so, so we've got to realize and get it in our hearts and our minds. This is what I mean by being spiritual. You've got to think along spiritual lines 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that you've got to realize that you've always got a connection to the throne of grace. You've always got a connection to the God of your salvation. Even, even uh, when you want to act silly and, and play, play pranks on people, I'm just saying, ain't nothing wrong with uh, uh, kidding around with people. Thank you, Lord. But, but you've got to realize that you can only go but so far. Uh, why? Because you're connected to Jesus. When, when you're out there having fun and laughing and giggling, uh, nothing wrong with that. Because laughter is good like good medicine. But you've got to realize that as soon as they turn it, that laughter and giggling to something that's evil or making fun of somebody, you got to realize, hey, I can't, I can't be laughing at that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be laughing at that. I got to bring myself in. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, the reason why I'm laughing, I'm laughing at myself because when I was uh, learning these things, uh, I used to uh, watch Martin. And you know, Martin, he was a funny guy. And, uh, uh, and I'm sitting up there, he would, some, 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 he was trying to say something funny, and I'm trying to laugh and hold myself in like I'm going to bust myself. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. See, I just, what I should have did, just got up from the TV. Thank you, Lord. But, 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 but we've got to know how far to go. We got to know what to do. Why? Because I'm always in his presence. Hallelujah. I'm always in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And everything I do and everywhere I go, his eyes is upon me. Thank you, Lord. And he wants to show himself strong. He wants to show himself mighty. Hey, come on, shot. Thank you, Lord. That's why we can't be cussing out people. Thank you, Lord. That's why we can't be lying, cheating, and stealing. Thank you, Lord. We got to be strong in God and in the power of his might. So, I want to say this. That scripture, it says, they shall, verse, verse chapter 11, verse 32, but the people who do know their God shall be strong. If you know your God, you shall be strong. If you are in a relationship with God, you can't be weak. <laughs> it's impossible to be weak because of what it takes to know him. It takes seeking him in prayer. It takes seeking him in fasting. It takes seeking him and reading his word and being obedient to his word to know him. Huh? And people that go to those great lengths, it takes denying yourself. Amen? It takes, it takes giving of yourself. Uh, it takes humbling yourself. And if you go to those great lengths uh, to know him, you have to be strong. Yeah. The very process makes you strong. Amen? So notice what he says. They that uh, know their God 
shall be strong. And notice, this is what I love. And do great exploits. And that simply means that when you know God, when evil comes, you'll resist it. Because you know your God. And, and you'll do great things. When other people are falling by the wayside, when other people are throwing in the towel, giving in to the enemy, no, you'll do great exploits. You'll resist the devil steadfast. You'll, you'll resist your own lust and own desires. Hallelujah. Why? So that God can show himself strong in your life. And when you do it that way, you'll do great exploits. Hallelujah. You'll, you'll have great battles under your belt. Like David and Goliath. People are still talking about David and Goliath. Why? Because David stood up and showed himself strong. People are still talking. Uh, they're still talking about the three Hebrew boys. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Why? Because they stood up. Hallelujah. And resisted evil. Hallelujah. People are still talking. Still talking about Daniel going to the lion's den. Why? Because he stood up. Thank you, Lord. And did great exploits. People are still talking about Jehoshaphat. Hey, hallelujah. Why? Because he stood up. People are talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because they stood up and did great exploits. People will know thy name. Hallelujah. Whose name? The name of Jesus. Hey, <laughs> when you stand up and do great exploits, people will know that there is a Savior and his name is Jesus. Notice what Jesus said. I'm done. Notice what Jesus said. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If you lift Jesus up and deny ungodliness and worldly lust, He'll draw men unto him. Hey, hallelujah. But in order to do that, my friend, you've got to recognize and realize that you're under God's great protection. Hallelujah. If you uh, want to be under God's great protection, that means that you've got to repent for all of your sin. Hallelujah. Repent and make that turn in your mind that that you realize that you've done wrong, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You got to say to yourself, Lord, I know that there's a better way. Uh, Lord, I know that there's a better life. And, and, and Jesus will transfer his joy to you if you turn to the Lord. Jesus will, he, he's, the, he's the headquarters for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> He'll give you the Holy Ghost if you turn your heart to the Lord. And if you repent of all your sins and say, Lord, I've done wrong. Lord, I've come short of your glory. Lord, save me. Deliver me. I repent. The Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then when you get an opportunity, you get baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be born of the water and of the spirit. Thank you, Lord. God is on your side. Hey, hallelujah. Jesus came. He was manifest for this reason, to help you, to deliver you, to give you what you need. And then you'll be under his protection, ah, his divine protection, so that you can do great exploits in this world, in this life. Ah, so that he can bless you in the life which is to come. Part of this, part of this message, uh, the Lord wanted me to talk about faithfulness and faith. You can't say you have faith and not be faithful. They go hand in hand. Faith and faithfulness go hand in hand. And it's more or less, you can't say you believe and, and not do what you believe. People who say they believe, they don't really believe. What they do is they're literally just 
acknowledging the truth. There's a difference between acknowledging what's right and believing what's right. When an individual believes that which is right, they act on it. When an individual believes what is right, they act on it. If you believe that this Bible is right, you should act on it. You should live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But if you just acknowledge that it's true, then you won't truly believe it. And that goes along with faith and faithfulness. If you say you have faith, then you are faithful. It goes hand in hand. You can't say that you are faithful and not have faith. You can't say that you have faith and not be faithful. Hallelujah. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, reason why I bring that up, my friend, I bring that up for this point, is because we got to combat thinking errors. This thing is too great, it's too precious, it's too powerful for us to remain in we're having thinking errors. To say I'm all right when I'm all wrong. Amen? So let us be encouraged and let us draw nigh to the Lord and he will draw nigh to us. I thank God for this Bible class here on today. I thank God for the word of truth that has gone out. And I thank God for you all tuning in and being with us on today. Uh, we, uh, here at Christian Ministries, we're looking uh, to uh, a platform. Uh, I want our members to get the uh, letters that I've sent out. Uh, they went out on today. Uh, if you don't get your letter, uh, by Monday, call the pastor. Call me. Thank you, Lord. I want you to receive your letter. And it's talking about our COVID-19 protocols. And it's also talking about us reopening. Amen. So I want you to uh, read the letter. If you have any questions, uh, please give me a call. I appreciate it. And those of you that uh, please send in your tithes and your offerings. Uh, we thank God for your uh, faithfulness. Uh, some people, uh, a lot of you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord, in giving, and I want to thank God for you. Uh, some people have been using our platform tidily, uh, faithfully, and I want to commend you for your efforts and your deeds and continue to use it. It's very uh, convenient. Uh, go on to tidily, uh, find our church, and, um, and give as the Lord has blessed you. Uh, those that uh, want to drop it off in our drop box, Christian Ministries, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. And those that want to mail it, you're free and welcome to do that as well. We've sent, we've received uh, tithes and offerings that way as well. So we certainly do thank God. I thank God for his mighty works and his mighty plan that he's shown toward us. And more than anything else, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might to do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Know that you're under his protection. Gracious Father, we get you. Thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for this word. Continue to encourage our hearts and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember, Pastor Quinn loves you. Thank you, Lord. And may heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.